Gale from Kansas, if you please. If you remember me, I starred in the 1939 epic movie based off of L. Frank Baum's very famous novel, The Wizard of Oz. And remember that funny scene where a tornado hit my town and picked my house up off the ground? And there I saw a lot of things like Miss Gulch, my mean neighbor riding a bike, or a cow mooing, or even two men in a rowboat waving at me. In real life, there is nothing funny about being in a tornado. Tornadoes are the deadliest storms known to man. On average, the United States has 1,200 people tornadoes per year. That's the highest average in the world. Oh my goodness. Compare that to Canada, the second highest, which only has a hundred per year. Years ago, people had to rely on instinct by sky watching. That's what happened to us in the movie. That storm whipped up and we had no warning. We ran quickly to storm shelters, which were just holes in the ground. If you made it to that storm shelter, you were saved. Our warning system was seen and flee. That was it. Early scientists knew there was a need for a tornado warning system. Tornadoes do not leave much to do not leave a trail behind into like earthquakes, floods, or volcanoes do. They appear suddenly out of the sky, cause death and destruction, and then dissolve. The deadliest U.S. tornado happened in 1925. It was famously known as the Tri-State Tornado. That tornado killed 695 people, one storm system. The innovation of early tornado forecasting has changed the way we are warned about them today. Many lives have been saved. Today, on an average, Tornadoes kill 60 U.S. citizens per year. During the super outbreak of 1974, warning time was just a few minutes and killed so many people. Now, warning time is stretched to 15 minutes. We now have long-range forecasts that can tell us what will happen days from now. 64 years ago, forecasting would have been long and it would have been hit and miss by hand plotting on maps with very little or no communication. Today, with computers and technology, scientists can get all kinds of information in just a few seconds. Now, if you please, join me down the Yellow Brick Road as we learn about the timeline of tornado forecasting. We'll see impact and changes in the innovation. <laughs> On the Yellow Brick Road on the yellow One, what are tornadoes? Tornadoes develop from severe thunderstorms. They form in warm, moist air ahead of cold fronts. The winds inside a tornado are like a vacuum that sucks up anything it goes over. Wind speeds can be up to 500 miles per hour. The word tornado comes from the Spanish word tornir, meaning to turn or twist, and that is why they are also nicknamed twisters. Many years ago, they also nicknamed tornadoes cyclones, and that is why the great Iowa State University's team name is nicknamed the cyclones. But in fact, cyclones are much different from tornadoes. Cyclones are huge, and they need to be in water to blow. Cyclones can take up to days. Oh my. And also, Cyclones blow things around, whereas tornadoes suck things up. Tornadoes occur in all 50 states in the United States, but they mainly touch down in what is known as Tornado Alley, and my home state, Kansas, is in Tornado Alley. Oh my goodness. On the yellow road, on the yellow road. Two, the history of tornado forecasting. The first recorded pro use of a probe in the atmosphere was in 1749. Three years later, 
the scientist and founding father, Benjamin Franklin, used experiments with Kite to experiment all sorts of lightnings. He also declared that storms move from west to east or southwest to northeast. The telegraph was very important in the 19th century. With the telegraph, weather observations from far away could be studied. They could now telegraph ahead what was coming. The first telegraph line opened in 1845. The Smithsonian Institution used volunteers to observe storms. By the Civil War, there were 500 observing stations. In 1870, a centralized forecast program was established by the U.S. Army Signal Corps. John Park Finley, a tornado expert, began taking weather readings in 1882 at precise times. This was known as the dawn of tornado forecasting. There were also dark periods of tornado forecasting. In 1887, tornado research stopped and the word tornado was banned so that the public would not panic. That ban lasted 65 years. During the early 1900s, little progress was made in tornado forecasting. Airplane and kite observations began in 1928. The ban of the word tornado was lifted in 1938. Military airplane observations began in the 1940s though very few forecasts mention tornadoes. In order to help protect ammunition depots and factories during World War II, tornado forecasting returned. In the 1950s and the 60s, weather observation was done by hand. A public service film called Tornado in 1956 showed the public how to prepare for a tornado. The first weather satellite was established in the 1960s. In 1961, in his State of the Union address, President John F. Kennedy invited the United States to... In 1961, in his Union of the State address, President Kennedy invited all nations to join the U.S. in developing the use of the International Weather Service prediction, prediction Program. In 1961, an IBM computer program greatly improved the study of tornadoes. In 1970, the Doppler radar began, and a man by the name Ted Fujita devised a tornado rating scale called the Fujita scale. The scale rated tornadoes by damage done to buildings. In 2006, it was renamed the Enhanced Fujita Scale or the EF scale, and it is rated on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being the least amount of damage, and 5 meaning, meaning the wor most amount of damage. For the road, for the road. 3. Impact and changes today. As an impact of tornado forecasting, the verification of the origins of rotation in tornadoes experiment or vortex began in 1995. Using mobile equipment, the scientists got up close to a tornado. It was documented, it was documented from beginning to end for the first time in history. The vortex project has impacted the National Weather Service by improving warning statistics. In 2009 and 2010, the Vortex 2 project began. Using information from the original Vortex project, Vortex 2 is using cutting-edge technology. Today, we are warned of tornadoes by TV, radio, computer, weather radio, police scanners, and civil defense sirens, and by long-range weather forecasts. Today, Forecasters use the Doppler radar, satellite imagery, and sophisticated equipment to develop warnings. Also today, we can get our warnings from our smartphones, iPods, and tablets? Oh my goodness! 
I don't even know what these are. Compare the 1925 tri-state tornado that killed 685 people to a May 3rd, 1999 tornado that killed 44 people. You can see the impact of early warning systems and the number of lives saved because of the early work. Follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road. Four, the future of tornado forecasting. The newest technology on the horizon for tornado forecasting is the phased array radar. With this new technology, forecasters will use electronic scans to study storms and tornado development. And it will increase the warning time from an average of 15 minutes to an average of an hour. I want to tell you about my own experience with an EF5 tornado that struck near my home. On May 25th, 2008, a devastating tornado struck the town of Parkersburg, Iowa. Here is a picture of Parkersburg after the tornado. The tornado started in Parkersburg, ripped through New Hartford, and touched the north part of Cedar Falls, where I live. I rushed to the basement. I listened to the damaged parts of Parkersburg, and I knew it was for heading straight for Cedar Falls. I was so frightened because I didn't want my home destroyed. The tornado eventually dissolved and it never touched my home. Unlike Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, we have sophisticated warning systems that will help save our lives. Respect them and take shelter. I'm Hannah Ackerman and this is History Alive.